Tensions rising between North Korea and the West. When you've got a delicate diplomatic situation on your hands, who better to set loose in the middle of it all than Dennis Rodman? Obviously, in our situation that's making anyone in Washington very comfortable right now. We're joining me now to talk about that and the other hot button issues of the day. The senior senator from Arizona, John McCain. Senator McCain, first of all, Happy New Year to you, sir. Same to you, sir, and I hope you're healing from your um, trying to be a young man again and play cricket. <laughs> I had a little encounter with an Australian fast bowler from cricket, but uh, nothing, nothing compared to the wounds you've suffered over the years, sir, so I shall, I shall keep my bleating to a minimum. Uh, let's turn to North Korea off the top. Well, what do you make of Dennis Rodman? There's a school of, school of thought that he is being reckless and naive here. Other people think any kind of dialogue with North Korea is better than nothing. Where, where do you sit? I think he's an, I think he's an idiot. <laughs> I think I think he's he's a very a person that uh, of not great intellect who doesn't understand that he really does provide propaganda for one this very brutal ruthless young man. Look in, in one way it's almost comic but on the other side of it, it really does enhance his prestige with his people. And he's one of the, you know, the, the guy runs a gulag of 200,000 people. It's full of unspeakable cruelty. And so, uh, and he also has missiles and nuclear weapons. And so it, is, it, it, isn't a, it isn't a child's game here. I want to play a clip from uh, a conversation that Dennis Robin had with my colleague Chris Cuomo this morning, uh, which mm -hmm. concerned the uh, uh, situation involving Kenneth Bay, who's being held there, obviously, for reasons that uh, nobody seems to be quite sure of. Listen to this. Are you going to take an opportunity, right, right. if you get it, right. to speak up for the family of Kenneth Bay and to say, let us know why this man is being held, that this is wrong, that he is sick. If you can help, Dennis, will you take the opportunity? I know, what, 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 what I said, the one thing about politics, can obey the one thing. If you understand, I got a guy. If you understand what Kid and Bay did, yeah. do you understand what he did? What did he do? You in tell this me. Country? You tell me, what do you do? And, and no, 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 you tell me. You tell me. Why is he held captive? They haven't released any country? charges. They haven't Why? released, they haven't released I, any I, reason. I, 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 I mean, Senator McCain, the, the problem with all this is that he, he sounds shockingly naive at best. At worst, he's become a kind of propaganda tool for the North Korean regime, hasn't he? Well, absolutely. I mean, for him to say... Uh, do you know what he did? Obviously, uh, they had fed uh, Mr. Rodman some line about the person, which is just, uh, you know, the whole thing is, a, in, as I say, in one respect, it's kind of a sideshow with a guy that's not too bright, that's looking for something to do. And that, that kind of part of it can even amuse us. But when we're talking about an American that's being held prisoner and God knows what conditions, and he is basically defending it, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty bad behavior. It certainly is. Let's move on to another big story that's emerging today in Washington, uh, still on foreign affairs. This is Robert Gates, a former Defence Secretary's new book. Uh, some pretty damning revelations in this, not least of which he reveals the president had serious doubts about the entire enterprise in Afghanistan. He writes that by early 2010, he had concluded the president doesn't believe in his own strategy and doesn't consider the war to be his. For him, it's all about getting out. He goes on to write, I never doubted Obama's support for the troops, only his support for the mission. What do you make of this? Well, it's the assessment I've had, uh, frankly, since the presidential campaign. Um, I think you know that uh, one of the major reasons why he won the nomination of his party instead of Hillary Clinton is because she had voted for the resolution to go to war uh, in Iraq and he had voted against it. And so, uh, look, every time I've ever heard him talk about Afghanistan, he's talked about withdrawing. Uh, he said he'd get us out of Iraq. He got us out of Iraq. And uh, to blame Maliki, by the way, is absolutely false. We didn't want to stay and the president didn't want to stay. And so, uh, I, w I was not surprised to read that uh, uh, or hear about that portion, uh, portion of Mr. Gates's book. And by the way, if I could remind you, it's uh, in the Second Battle of, of Fallujah, we had 95 killed and 600 wounded. 
Well, talking of Fallujah, the reports this week that Al-Qaeda has retaken control in parts of Fallujah. What does this tell you about the reality of the situation on the ground there? It tells me because we didn't leave a force behind not to fight but to influence and to help and train and assist and do all the things that American troops could do and not fight anymore uh, that the situation uh, deteriorated very badly and the Iranians gained greater influence and uh, Maliki rather than trying to bring his country together uh, began almost immediately or within a year persecuting uh, the Sunnis, including his own vice president, and uh, uh, alienated these people in Anbar province. And now we are seeing people driving through Fallujah with black flags. And it's really tragic because we lost so many brave. You know, it was where the real fighting went on in the Iraq war, uh, Pierce, as you know. And uh, it's tragic for the families of those who sacrificed. Finally, Senator, this ongoing battle over unemployment benefits, uh, where are you sitting on this issue? Well, I'd like to find a way to pay for the $6 billion this costs. Uh, there, it, it would, it's impossible for me not to believe that we can't find $6 billion in order to fund this rather than just increase the debt. Second of all, we obviously need to reform uh, the, the system. And third of all, Harry Reid, who has now become almost a dictator in the United States Senate, won't allow us any amendments to, to try to make it better. That's not the way the Senate had worked in there, particularly in the early years I was here. We would debate and we would amend and we would, they would probably win votes, but at least they should have, Harry should give us a voice and allow us an amendment to, to, to make it better. That's what the Senate's supposed to be about. And he's stopping all that. Senator McCain, it's good to see you back on as feisty form as always. You clearly rested and up for the fight in 2014. Good to talk to you. Thank you, my friend. Bye-bye.